Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Rap Podcast. I'm Jamie, I'm not Lee G. Uh, Lee is not able to join us this week, but we do have a capable replacement joining us this week. We got Martin from the Scarlet Fever Podcast. How are we doing, Martin? Well, I'm all right. I'm, I'm not quite sure about a capable replacement. I can't get my video to work. Yeah, I, I would say it's good to see you, but I can't see you. <laughs> it's it's just too nice to look at things like this when you know when you've got to stay at the dragon season. You know what I mean? Yes, I do know exactly what you mean. But uh, maybe you will magically reappear during this podcast. I don't know, but it's nice to have you with us anyway. And of course, I'm joined by Harley Worthy. Good evening, Harley. How are we? Oh, good evening. Uh, I'm glad you finally dropped. You've dropped the doctor whenever you whenever you're hosting this because it always makes me feel a little bit sheepish. <laughs> I tried taking out my Twitter hat, Twitter name, and everyone keeps keeps calling me out on it. Uh yeah, all good. Uh, had a very nice long weekend without Cardiff losing, which is always nice. Yeah, same year. You know, the Dragons did lose last week, which is great, isn't it? And same for Scarlet as well, I suppose. Uh, a good week for most of us, I think. Okay, so you can find us on platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and the Sports Social Network. And if you like what we do, please subscribe, share with your mates, and leave us a good review, as it all helps to grow the pod. Right then, let's get into it. Let's do Drink of the Week first. Uh, Martin, I can't see you, obviously, but do you have a drink by you? I do have a drink. And it, it's a very posh drink. It is hand-delivered by my milkman. It's a pint of full-fat milk. Oh, that's nice. That sounds really nice. With a proper cream on the top as you open it. Honest to God. The, the missus found a milkman about two weeks ago that delivers but to us. I was like, yes, give it to me. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. It, there must be something added to the process to put it into a carton or something. But this is absolutely stunning. You know, I only ever have milk for cereal and tea, but I've been drinking this by the pint. And it's, it's the nicest thing in the world, fair play to it. Okay, pint of milk. There we are then. Uh, Harley, what's your drink of the week? What have you got for us? Sorry, I'm still, I'm, I'm still chuckling to the way my mind works when they can said his wife found a milkman to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, sorry, I've, I've, I've thrown the can away, but I've got um, a lovely, nice looking glass, and inside there is some Barrio Island IPA. From, uh, so, from Lovely the Brains stuff. Craft Range, I can't remember if I've brought, had it on the pod before. It's actually one of the more decent things Brains brains do. So, and as I said, I, I basically did a pallet last week in uh, Morrison, so this is can number two of that, that batch. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Good stuff. Okay, so my drink of the week, Um, any tiny rebel drinkers will know this one. This is Easy Living. It's one of their classic beers. Um, Yeah, it's just a classic, isn't it? <clears throat> 4.3%. Um, Yeah, you can't go wrong with Easy Living. So that's what I've got this week. Shall we move on to the news desk? Because we have got a lot of news to talk about, Um, mostly from Dragons and Cardiff. Nothing from the Ospreys or Scarlets, really. But, um, yeah, let's rattle through these... Uh, News as we go along. So let's start at Cardiff then, shall we? So Cardiff have signed Cardiff Met prop Joe Cowell. Um, Cowell's made 51 appearances for Cardiff Met and was famously called into action by Cardiff against Toulouse in 2021. You remember that one, Harley, when, when the first team squad was stuck in quarantine. So that's a good pick up there and obviously building for the future. And then on the coaching side, Cardiff have brought in Johnny Goodrich. Uh, the former fullback who spent more than a decade playing his trade for Gloucester, Leeds and Bristol is taking up the position of assistant attack slash skills coach following the departure of Richie Reese. So they're getting their coaching team all sorted there. And they've also announced two signings today. So we're recording this on Tuesday. They've announced two loose head props. So the first one is Danny Southworth from Exeter Chiefs. So he's a Welsh qualified loose head prop. He's made 25 First team appearances for Exeter. Um, he's a converted number eight, which is quite interesting. So, um, yeah, he's qualified for Wales from his grandparents. Do you know anything about Danny Southworth, Ali? Um, quite shockingly, since I live near Exeter, I, I don't know a huge amount. I mean, I've seen like clips from when he's played Premiership Cup and stuff. Looks pretty decent. Um, you know, I mean, certainly on the highlights field, it showed that you know he actually can scrimmage. That is isn't convert number eight. Suggests that you know he's probably got a bit more of the power game replacing the Bruce Carey. Um, yeah, I mean he's still only twenty five, so you know it's plenty of plenty of room with room with him. 
not really getting a lot of game time for the Chiefs. You know, being stuck behind Scott's the likes of Scott Sear and Alec Hepburn. So yeah. I'm presuming he's a fairly cheap, cheap buy as well. So you know that's a good bit of business, especially combined with the next I said, uh, compared with the other prop that he signed in Ed Byrne. So you know, experienced Leinster Leinster and Ireland International. Uh, you know, and Ed, Ed's not really been getting a lot of game time for Le- Leinster. You know, I mean, Beck was they've used six loose head props this season, which you know is a luxury. I'm sure we all could like, because I don't think we can cobble six together at the moment. So yeah, I some decent sign on that front. From from what I've been hearing, Joe Cowell is looking being looked at more as a tight head as well. So that's going to be helping boost that stocks, and you know, it's looking mm. like he's likely to be this that number three jersey and for the Cardiff Rags and the EDC. So, so yeah, what does this looking mean? like a decent profile of props? Hmm? What does this mean for Domakowski then for them signing a more experienced player? I mean, is this you know saying we haven't got enough belief, or are they thinking that he can't last the full season? Because you no, know, I I'd be looking at Corey as, you know, my main number one loose head, now the car is gone, and you're bringing in someone who is vastly experienced. I mean, it's all good and well having loads of props, etc. but when the salary cap is so tight, you know, it, you, you, is it really why you're spending that money on another loose head when you've already got one who's supposedly capable? I mean, the same um, thing can be question of the Scarlet signing Alec Hepburn with when we got Kenson Mathias still here. I think you've got to look at it as, is you know Corey Domchowski isn't going to be there every week. You know I think Corey Domchowski is going to be our first choice, but then you want a good, you want someone good on the backup. You know we've basically been dovetailing Carey and Domchowski this season. Uh, you know, and when one of the one or the other has not been available, we've had Reese Barrett on the bench, and sharrett has been quite reluctant to use him because it's, you know they don't think he's quite ready for this level, and by bringing in someone as experienced as Ed Burton. You've got a senior international who can be there for for these developing players, but also then if Corey gets and it picks up a knock or you know he's away with Wales, we've got someone who can step up and we're not going to have the drop in quality. So I think you know that's where the depth is going to be quite useful. Plus also with Ed Byrne, he has captain Leinster a few times as well, so we've got that leadership role, which is something Jockey's been very keen on. And you know in the video he announced today, they released today, you know you're saying that you know. Part, part of these priorities for the people he's bringing in are these more experienced players to help build the young for the youngsters to build around. So on the on the face of it, yeah, you know, maybe it's not the wisest bit of money, but also as soon as you think, well, if Domachowski gets injured on the door, presumably he goes, you know, then then we're stuck at shit creek without a paddle. Mm, it's a good sign, and I think Ed Bird, you know, like I said, he brings experience and Cardiff are going to be well stocked, I would do, because you'll have Domachowski, you'll have Reese Barrett, you'll have Ed Byrne, and you've got the other guy as well, haven't you? Yeah, you've got his name is the... me. So, well, who have you yeah. got? And we've also got Reese Barrett's younger brother as well, whose name I've, I've, I've forgotten, but he's just joined, been promoted to the senior academy. So it's looking like we've so got a well decent stopped. age profile and conveyor through. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a tidy saying. Like I said, Domachowski will be away with Wales and you know, you've got good options at least. Uh, it's a sensible sign in Cardiff for making, I think. Which, um, you yeah, no, I say I, that about I, Cardiff, do you? <laughs> do you know what I, I mean? I, you know, I'm expecting them to sign the, the ghost of Felipe Contopomi next week just to sort of balance it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the sign in news. Um, let's move on to some not so good news. So, Matt Sherrod has confirmed that Thomas Young is going to miss the rest of the season after suffering a ruptured bicep. So, uh, yeah, that's a big blow for Cardiff, but uh, he should be back fit and available for the start of pre-season. So at least, as you were saying earlier, at least you know that Thomas Young is going to be with you guys next season. So uh, that's something, I suppose. And then let's talk about departures. So, the Lane train is departing for France. That's right. So Owen Lane is going to be leaving Cardiff at the end of the season to join Valence Romans in the Pro D2. 43 tries in 92 Cardiff appearances, and he's won five Wales Caps, scoring two tries. Uh, yeah, so on two tries and winning five Wales Caps. In another departure, to the surprise of many, Shane Lewis Hughes has joined the Dragons from Cardiff. So Lewis Hughes, who can play as a flanker or lock, came through Cardiff's academy and has played 68 games for the region, and he's won three caps for Wales. He would have had a lot more, wouldn't he, but uh, for injuries. So I want to get your take on 
those to Patchen, Ali Owen Lane, and in particular Shane Lewis Hughes going to the Dragons. Did that surprise you? Um, yes and no. So I think if you look at the again, this it goes back to things Doc was saying about like you know he's basically said the reason they they've had to let him go is budget, and it's like well we've got very experienced players in those positions plus some plus some youngsters coming through, and they sort of fit in fall in that middle ground of. You know, the injuries have not really played, you know, played well. Um, I think Shane Lewis is going to be a great signing for the Dragons. I think you you called it on Dragons Lair months ago that he'd be a great signing for the Dragons. <laughs> I don't know if that was your insider knowledge of uh, mating up with uh, David Buttress or not, but you know, I I like to believe that you're you're actually making the signing decisions now. <laughs> I wish <laughs> I I knew a few weeks ago actually. I sort of dropped it in the nearest hints, so uh, I I. Just... Planted the seed as a yeah, I knew we signed him. Um, and I just wanted to get the reaction really of, of Gav and other people by name dropping him. So, uh, oh, there hey. he is, he's joined us. Yes. I knew he would. We can see you now. So, you can see it is real, it wasn't made up. Lovely thing to do. Oh, there for, we go. Then. For all you listeners, Martin has finally appeared on video on the Zoom call. So, we were looking at a Ooh. blank screen trying to sort of interact with it with a nothingness. The hair is tied back, thing, so there's not much of a mean going on today. But I do have my pink headphones, so that's always a nice one. Are they your daughters, then? Yes. No <laughs> shame in that. No, you should have lied and said they were yours, and you picked them especially. Well, no, if I can, if I turn them, you can see all the lovely oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. That they've put, that they've put on. Um, I, I, I got four girls, and the three younger ones have all got these headphones, so I'm just the <laughs> one for today. That's fair, that. Um, yeah, the Shane Lewis who's I, I'm quite pleased about that. What I like about this signing is it's pretty low risk because um, the Argus reported that we've signed him on meagre terms. So we've actually signed him on less money than what he was getting at Cardiff. So we're picking up a Welsh international on the cheap. And if it doesn't work out, that's fine. It's two years. We just say, off you go. You know, we're not paying over the odds for him. And if it does work out, then great. Um, like I said, we're getting a Welsh international on the cheap. So um, I think it's a really good bit of business by the dragons but um he just needs to stay fit because he's been just, very just to add to that as well sorry just to add to that as well i think because jockey's been trying to force him into playing a bit more second rope because he wants still him as this josh turnbull replacement i think shane really just wants to play six so i think the dragons they've that's more of a, more of an option whereas you know you've got second rows having to fill in at six whereas you know we've got yeah. sec- we've got sixes filling in at second row so that does help. Yeah. I mean, it does make the Dragons back look quite tasty. You know, you have mm. Lewis, Lewis, Bash, um, and Wade, right? And then obviously you've got Teddy, who got a couple of bench. And I know you've got, is it, what was it, David? Woodman? The, the young guy. Big fan of Woodman. He looked awesome yeah. on the weekend for Newport. You know, so cause you, you've got a good yeah. set of uh, back rows coming through there. You've got a nice little stable to go for a good few seasons. Yeah, and don't forget our new signer, Solomon Funaki as well, from Monaco Pacifica, the Tongan International. So, uh, yeah, back row is looking like a good area of strength. And I presume he's probably replacing Sean Lonsdale. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm hearing anyway. Sean Lonsdale could be moving on. So, he kind of plays that lock back row hybrid. So, it's a good replacement. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's no risk. It's just, let's just see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, I was quite happy with that signing. Right then, moving on to the Dragons now. Um, David Buttress was stepped down as Dragons chairman this summer. Um, this is due to him taking on that OVO Energy uh, chief executive job, so it's pretty inevitable, really, that he was going to stand down. Um, Buttress will remain on the Dragons board, though, as a non-executive director and a major part of the ownership team, so he's not going far. And Dragons have announced that the co-owner, David Wright, will be the club's oh. new chairman from the 1st of July onwards. So, uh, yeah, I've talked about this on Dragon Slayer. Um, what a brilliant job David has done, you know, in Welsh rugby. You know, he stood up to the WRU, the PRB, and if it wasn't for David, Dragons wouldn't exist, you know, because he fought for the club. Um, yeah, we were very, very close to going under, and uh, good on him for getting it done. So, um, yeah, he's been a great asset to the Dragons, and thankfully he's not going too far. He's still remaining on the board, so good luck to him in his new role for Oval Energy. And then let's go on to some signing news. And so since the last pod, um, you know, we talked about the signing Chris Hollis and Solomon Fadaki. So since then, we've signed a pair of Australians. So we've signed highly rated centre, the 23-year-old Harry Wilson from the Waratahs. Not a surprise down under that he's gone overseas. He was pretty highly rated down here. So it's a bit of a shock that he's left. 
and former Scarlet Slot, Steve Cummins. Remember him, Matt? Steve Cummins? Yeah, I remember him very fondly in parking down alongside uh, Jay Paul. Is a, is a good memory. Um, when, when I look at Steve Cummins now, though, I, I look at how many games he's played over the last few seasons. I think he's played seven games in two years. You know, he's been 32. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming he's not going to be coming on a great deal of money. So, I mean, no, no. But, but you imagine this, this is probably a, a medium level risk for you guys signing someone like him because he is getting on. He hasn't played a lot of rugby recently. I mean, I hope it comes off. I, I really do. It'd be great to see you guys competing at the top level again. But, you know, this, this screams to me the type of uh, signing that the, the sort of journeyman signing that we've seen a lot of in World Rugby. Well, I, I think, you know, Dave Flagon talked about adding experience and bulk to the pack. Um, Obviously, Steve Cummins does that. You know, he's been around a little while now. He's 32, but he's also six foot seven. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's pretty handy, isn't it, having a six foot seven lock? So um, I think he's been brought in, like I said, just to add a bit of muscle, a bit of experience. I don't know if he's going to be a week in, week out starter, but he's a good option to have on the bench. We do have a young group of players, and I think he's going to be a good mentor for guys like Ben Carter and Nick Thomas as well. You know, you've got to think about that. So um, I think it's a decent sign. And like you said, Matt, he's not going to be on a lot of money. So again, I think it's fairly low risk. I think he's been signed on a two-year deal. Um, he's not going to cost the earth. But um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's a decent signing. You know, in an ideal world, we'd all love to be signing even at Sabeth, wouldn't we? And yeah, they're a world-class lock. But unfortunately, uh, our budgets dictate otherwise. But uh, I, you know, I think it's a decent signing person. But uh, keen to see how that one goes. And then off the field appointments. So Dragons have announced Reese Blumberg as the club's new chief executive officer. So Reese moves to Ronnie Gray to take up the post ahead of next season following a four year spell as chief chief operating officer at Cardiff Rugby. So Blumberg has worked as general manager, commercial manager and head of sales and marketing during this time with Cardiff Rugby. And I know how highly thought of he is in Welsh Rugby. He's done some really good work at Cardiff, as you Harley can probably attest to. I'd also say as well, uh, your co-host, Carwin Harris, did a really good interview with Reese Blumberg in Sporting Wales. So I would urge any of our listeners, especially drag sports, to read that interview that Carwin did with him in Sporting Wales because really, really good. He spoke well, and I think he's going to be a very good asset to the Dragons. It's good to see us get our off-field uh, appointments um, you know, sorted as well as the on-field because it's just as important as any off-field stuff as well as the on-field. So pleased about that. And then finally... The big news, the news that's got Welsh Rugby Twitter talking at least, is uh, Dragons have finally announced a defence coach and it's none other than all, former All Black and Ospreys legend, Theo Tia Tia. So, uh, yeah, great appointment, I think. You know, he comes with a lot of experience. He's been head coach at Toyota Fair Blitz and Sunwolves in Japan and he spent time as a forwards coach and assistant coach for the Japan national side. Um, Tia Tia has worked in Super Rugby as well as forwards coach for Manic Pacifica and he's had a spell as forwards coach with Auckland rugby. So um, he's coming back to Wales with a wealth of coaching knowledge and experience. So, uh, yeah, finally, please, we got a defence coach because um, we've got all season without the defence coach in the show. So you just can't do that. And you can't go through uh, the entire season without the defence coach in this, uh, you know, in the URC because it's just pretty amateur. But uh, finally, please, we got that sorted. Can I just say how jealous I am right now that you picked that you guys are signing players and coaches left, right and centre? And there's just nothing on the Scarlet's front. The only thing I even know that's coming is our leavers list is supposed to be announced before Saturday. And you know that that's not gonna get people going. And especially knowing we need at least one coach before next season and there's rumors over almost everyone except for Dwayne Peel going. So you know it's I am unbelievably jealous of you guys right now. It's a good appointment. I'm really pleased with it. The proof is in the pudding, of course, but um, I, I think we've done incredibly also, well. One thing I did see other people point out, and his thing is, if you look at his coaching CV, it's pretty much all forwards coach, which actually, to be fair, for the Dragons is not necessarily a bad thing. No. Because no, well, they need, to, need some decent forward coaching as well, but I think that could, that could cause a teasing problem. But you were saying about having a defence coach all season. Remember, you you know, you've got had the same number of wins as the Scarlets, and they ha- they've had two defence coaches this season. I mean, yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, uh, I don't think we've had a defence coach at all until the Munster game based on things that we heard inside the camp. It was just a, a lot of turmoil going on through that first... 
well, let's be honest, it was the first nine months of the season because we've had a hell of a long pre-season as well. But, yeah, we've, uh, in terms of defence, Jared Payne seems to be doing a, a really good job and what a surprise, he is a defence coach, you know. Yeah. But uh, he's apparently still doing some work with the backs and attack as well, which it, it just... I'm just well, that was the reason he that. left, wasn't That's why he left also, is because Dan McFarlane wouldn't let him take over the attack coach. Yeah. and Because well, that's, that's what he wants to do. Yeah, it was the same when he... Oh, where did he go in France? It, it bloody... It, it Claremont, my I think? I don't know Some... why it's Claremont's in my head. Uh, I'm, I'm not an upset, but it, it was the exact same thing there. He was take, he had the defence there, and then he moved up the head coach when their head got sacked, and they just w- didn't want to keep him on as an attack coach. So he reached out to his friend, O'Dwing, gives a job, and uh, here we are. Well, there we go then. Okay, that's all the news done. Let's talk about what happened on the weekend. So it was the Welsh Premiership semi-finals. Um, let's start with Llandovery and Cardiff. So we finished Llandovery 34, Cardiff 13 at Church Bank. Now, Martin, I know you watched this game. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, it finished 38-13. Um, oh, did it? Honest, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. That was 40, 40, I'm thinking 48. I'm thinking Newport now. My bad. Sorry, Matt. It was 34-13, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking uh, Newport then with the eight. I remember there was an eight in there. Never mind. Uh, game was awesome. Honestly, God, that first half, it, it was so intense. I mean, the speed of which band of replay, you know, it, it wouldn't be out of place in the URC. And the Cardiff defence, all credit to the Rags, they just, they were a brick wall in that first half. It didn't matter what the draw was thrown at them. It was just repelled, repelled, repelled. And you know, one of the very few chances Cardiff had, they actually crossed the line. So, you know, they went into half time in the lead. You know, not many teams get to do that at Church Bank. So that's a massive credit in itself. But, you know, same as when it, with any team, when you defend them for long periods of time, the floodgates do eventually open. And I think it was about the 55 minute mark. Uh, Drovers ran in at an ice well played uh, team try. You know, they worked through the phases, got over. And then. I think it was Max Page who picked up the second try with that, with that wonder, wonder run. And he beat about four or five defenders on his own to go and down. The game kind of seemed dead for about 60 minutes. And I don't think, I think Cardiff had really overexerted themselves defending for so long. And they just didn't have anything to fire back with. But all, all in all, it was, it was a brilliant game to watch. And uh, I'm really disappointed the Newport every uh, real game wasn't broadcasted well. It would have been a perfect opportunity to do it because I was supposed to be. You know, a great show when of attacking rugby as well from Newport in that game. Mm. Talk to us about Max Page then, Matt, because there's been a lot of hype around this kid and that try was doing the rounds on Twitter. Um, could you see him breaking into the Scarlets team pretty soon? Looks like to be one for the future, doesn't he? Yeah, he's from... I, I've seen him at under-18 level, uh, obviously under-20s and now this season with the Drovers. He wants to play 13. He, he can okay. cover he can cover eleven through to fifteen, but from what I've seen of him, he wants to play thirteen, and that's you know that's that's one of the hardest jobs in the backline, especially in defence. And he's he's still learning, same as any nineteen year old you know outside centre in the world. He's still learning your defensive responsibilities at that level. Um, in attack wise, he's he's brilliant on his own. You know. Um, one thing I've seen from him that has improved over this season is when he's facing that last man and he's got options with him, he, he doesn't always make the right decision. He doesn't always execute those two on ones for the simple try. But that is something that's improved In terms of starting for the Scarlets, yeah, I could probably see him at some... He's definitely started pre-season some games. He'll definitely be involved there. In terms of the URC and Europe, if he does play, I would imagine he'd start more on the wing, just to sort of you know introduce him to the game more because I think that's where he can he can really cause some damage as we've seen. You know, this isn't the first time he's scored a try like this this season. So he's very exciting. I'm expecting him to get a few starts on the wing over the course of the season. But yeah, he he wants to be a 13. I can see him pushing for that 13 over the next few years. He's very similar to uh, Corey Baldwin in terms of he wants to be a 13, but he's 
perfectly built and shaped to be a winger. He's got that top end pace. He's, he's got everything you need for that. Mm, okay, interesting. That's so, good... in the other... Sorry, go on, Adi, what you say? I was just, just going to add, because a lot of stuff Mark says is basically everything we've been saying, the, the Cardiff with Mason Grady coming through. Ah, like you can tell he's he, you know he wants to be a thirteen, but he's still trying to learn it all. And actually, if you stick him on the wing, it's quite devastating. So, you know, it's actually quite, yeah, quite interesting. I think he's gonna have a, it's gonna be fun for him trying to get through past Joe Roberts' mind at at, at Scarlets because yeah, we, you know I, I, we, I've made no secret for me Joe Roberts is my my choice thirteen. Yeah, well, you know Johnny Williams has been doing a job for us. You know whether he stays with us or not, that's still up in the air at the minute. Or at least it was the last time we had anything official of the grade. And, you know, Johan Nicholas covers our 13 berth, and he is a rock-solid regional player. So, yeah, there's, there's a, few, uh, a few steps for him to climb if he wants to get that 13 shirt. Mm, OK, fair enough then. Uh, you touched on earlier there. In the other semi-final, Newport RFC bumped Ebervale 48-13 over in Newport Stadium thanks to a hat-trick from Dragon Centre Joe Westwood who was named Player of the Match. Uh, Dragon Scrum off Shade Hope also got on the score sheet. I didn't see this game. I've only seen the highlights, but um, Joe Westwood, he looks some talent. Um, and Shea Hope is having a fantastic season for Newport. I'm just hoping those guys can transfer it now to the Dragons at the, on the big stage of the URC. But um, I, I think it's the right final, having these two teams. These are clearly the two best teams in the Premiership by Country Mile. Newport have now won 15 straight games in a row since losing to Landover at the end of November. That is very oh. impressive, isn't it? Fair play to them. They're a very yeah. good team, aren't they, Mark? And one thing with Newport as well, they are they peaking. They've really, yeah. uh, probably since the game that they won, I guess, and Dovery, uh, down in, I think it was at Newport Stadium. Uh, since that game, they've gone up about three or four gears because they have been firing through absolutely everybody. We look at the results from early in the season against Ebu Vale. You know, they won by eight away and they lost by six at home. You know, to go on them win this game by 35 points, that's that's completely out of the range. You know, that's totally unexpected based on what we've already seen this season. So I I am worried when I'm when I'm looking at it from a drover's point of view. They have come out and they have done Christ, they they've done more than a job on some of these teams. Yeah, they got a really good blend of youth and experience because obviously mm-hmm. you've got the kids coming from the Dragons, then you've got guys like Elliot Frewer, you've got Matt O'Brien, who's been brilliant at that level for so long, Lloyd Lewis, um, Henry Palmer, and mm-hmm. then you've got Reinhard Lambman, who's been brilliant since he's come back to Newport, who I still think could do a job at the Dragons. Honestly, I, I think he could still do a job at pro level, but uh, yeah, Newport have been flying, fair play to him. So the Premiership final would be at Church Bank, Plan de Free. Uh, against Newport RFC on Saturday, May the 11th, which is this Saturday. Should we have some quick predictions? Harley, who are you picking for a winner from that? Tough one, isn't it? Yeah, actually, it's, it's, it's probably tougher than either the semi-finals were. Because, I mean, I agree. With, even though, you know, normally the car, the rags supporter here, and, you know, Flander, we had a number on, on us for the last couple of seasons. Um uh, purely for home advantage, I'm going to go for Drovers by four. But I, th- I think it's going to be quite quite a close game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. But uh, I think the game being at Church Bank though, probably gives Plant every a good advantage to say. What do you say, Ahmad? Well, you're going to say Plant every you know? Yeah, I'm always going to say Plant every. Uh, <laughs> Don't quite ask it. I think it's going to be an entertaining game, just the way both of them play, but the way both of them want to play. Yeah. I reckon it's probably going to be close for about 70, maybe even 75 minutes, but I, I do think Fanta are going to pull away in the end. And I'll go Drovers by 10. Drovers by 10. I'm going to go Newport by 5. I think Newport will just about get the job done. Okay, so let's move on to URC, the bread and butter of the URC, round 16. It's kids' round as well this weekend. So kids have the opportunity to take over the match day and broadcast role so they, they can do stuff like match manager, play with the match interviews, you know, ground staff, um, doing the club kit manager and PA announcer, which I think is really good. And I, I know Osprey's fans will say, 
Yeah. I know all space fans will say, we've already done that, but it's, it's good that the URC are doing it right across the board. I think it's a great way to get the kids involved, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I think that's really good work by the URC. So, let's start with the games then, and let's preview this weekend. Friday night, first up, it's Dragons against the Stormers. Um, it's the last game of the season, the last home game of the season for the Dragons at Bromley Parade. 7.35 kickoff, the referee is Chris Busby. The game is live on BBC Two Wales and Premier Sports. So the problem that Dragons got now is they are playing teams who are chasing the top eight. And they're looking at us thinking, OK, we need to take five points from them. You know, we are being looked at in that way, unfortunately. And that's when the Dragons need to stand up, turn around and go, actually, no. You know, we're, we're not going to roll over and lay down. So they really need to fight in these last few games. Um, unfortunately for the Dragons, though, Stormers are coming down here fully loaded. I've seen the squad today that John Dobson has uh, announced and, yeah, all this spring box there. So he said, we are taking our spring box. This will be a very different mindset from the first tour. It's full metal jacket. Great film, that. It's full metal jacket to try and win every game. So, yeah, they're coming down here fully loaded. It's going to be very, very difficult. Um, I saw today that Kai Evans has broken his bone in his shin, so we're not going to see him now until probably Judgment Day. That's when they're hoping to to get him back. If not, then Dyfed Fang and said he might be available for the Wales tour to Australia. So that means we'll probably see Jordan Williams, a fullback, who I actually thought did okay against Connor. I'm not a big Jordan Williams fan, but I thought he did all right. Probably have Will Reed at 10. Angus O'Brien hopefully should be coming back from injury. He'll be on the bench. I'm quite looking forward to seeing Chris Hollis. So Chris Hollis is a South African that we signed from Storm as the sort of wing centre. So he's going to make his debut against his old club, which is quite interesting. And he's got three games, basically, to impress the Dragons. You know, he's, he's here on trial. He's got three games to impress. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes. He might give us a bit more power, a bit more pace. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a very, very uh, tough game. Um, yeah, it's... I, I, I hope there's a good crowd down there. Like I said, it's the last game of the season at home at Ronnie Pride. I hope it's a good crowd, but we are really going to have to front up because, uh, yes, it's, it's going to be a tough one, especially if they're coming down here with their spring box. And then on Saturday, we got Scarlets versus Ulster. Um, at Lethney, kickoff time, five past three. The referee is the Italian ref, Gianluca. Is it Ganecki? I don't know if you pronounce that. <coughs> Ganecki or Ganecki? Um, it's live on Premier Sports. So I don't think this game is on free to air. So, Martin, how do you feel about this one? Because Scarlets did put up a pretty good showing against the Sharks, didn't they? They showed a lot of spirit, a lot of fight, a lot of endeavour. And if they take that into this weekend against Ulster, they got a chance to come away with something, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially seeing the way the Sharks beat Clermont on the weekend as well. That's, you know, just double down on that performance that we put in against them. You know, for the last two months, you know, uh, probably during the middle of the Six Nations, I, the mood seems to have turned in the camp. You know, everybody seems a little bit happier. You know, I, I know we've only had that one win since, but, you know, w- when the boys are playing, they, you can see it on the field that they're actually, get, not that they never nodded though, but you can just see the emotion on them. You can see them wanting it more than they perhaps have done previously. You know, maybe that's to do with the coaching changes or whatever, I don't know. But Ulster haven't performed as well as they would have wanted to this season. And then coming down here, knowing they've got Leinster and Munster in the last two games, they're probably thinking, we either get the five points down here or that's our playoff hopes over. So all the pressure is on them. And I think we can do a job, you know, I'm I'm always going to pick the Scarlet win, even if I don't believe we're going to win. But if we're still in it at the 18, at the 79, 18 minute mark, I, I'll be happy with that. I'm happy to just take performances right now. So yeah, I, I think I think we can do it, uh, especially if Alex Craig comes back in at lock. You know, we we've definitely got the players, and now it seems we've got a team that's actually willing to play. One thing I do want to see is something in attack. We saw against the Sharks, we tried to set play off the scrum. I'd like to see a bit more of that. I, I don't think, you know, we've had enough time under this sort of hybrid peel, pain, attack coach to develop proper phase play yet. You know, that takes months, sometimes even seasons. 
So I'd like to see us almost every line out of Scrum try something on first phase. Let, let's see what we can do because that is where we are best. I mean, you know, I, I've still got memories of that. I think it was the 44 nil against the Ospreys where we, you know, had a set playoff of Scrum and scored like an 18 meter try. You know, it, it's things like that that as Scarlet, you want to see, you want to see us try something, be expansive, give it a go. And it is something we've missed massively and something that we're slowly seeing creep back in. But the more that we could see against us, I'd be really happy. Yeah, should be an interesting game, shouldn't it? And then later in the day, a quarter past five, it's the Emirates Lions versus Cardiff Rugby. Um, over in Johannesburg, referee is Owen Cross. This game is live on S4C and Premier Sports. I don't know about you, Harley. I think this has got fun written all over it. I could see a lot of tries being scored. These are two teams who like to chuck the ball about. They play good brand of rugby. I think this could be fun. How do you feel about uh, this game? So on on the face of it, yeah, you know, two teams who like to throw the ball about and score try. The problem is Cardiff haven't really been scoring tries. You know, mm. we, you know that that Dragons Boxing Day game really pushed right. You know, at one point we were like top three of the attacking stats, and it was literally that one Boxing Day game. And it's if you look, if you plot out all of our scores, it's such an anomaly. Ah, uh, then you've got the altitude of factor as well. You know, we're basically going to be going with our first choice team who've played a lot of rugby. So, you know, I think they're going to be quite tired. Lions, you know, like, despite being 11th in the table, plus 89 points difference, plus 13 try difference, you know, they, they these guys score tries. So I think yeah. it's going to look very fun from their perspective. Uh, Cardiff, I hope, hope show up, but I'm, I'll be honest, not, not feeling very optimistic, you know, especially after the Edinburgh game two weeks ago, because, you know, that was probably our best chance to get a fourth win of the season. Mm. And, you know, kind of fucked it, so... Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm less optimistic than, than uh, a lot, a lot of Cardiff fans. I think they're a good team, though. The Lions, I love watching. Lions, the Lions. are very. So good yeah, team. I don't like playing against them because they will tear you to shreds if you're not on it. But they, they're very underrated. I think I don't think they get the credit they deserve. I mean, I know they are probably the weakest of the four South African franchises, but they are a very good team. And if you underestimate them, like I said, they'll uh, they'll punish you. I think it's going to be a really yeah. good game that. Absolutely. Um, one thing I would say is maybe what we have to do, which is, it's not often I say this, but I think we maybe need to take a leaf out of Munster's book when they played them. And they basically just said, this Lions, you know, a lot of, they score lots of tries, but mostly through counter-attack and broken mm. field play. And I think what we're going to have to do is just give, just say, here's a ball ball, then try and go against our defence, because that is one thing that's been working very well for us. So, you know, a lot of teams haven't been scoring much past us. And then hopefully try and get make ourselves a little bit more clinical in attack. Okay. And then the last game is Leinster versus Ospreys, which is at the RDS. Kickoff 7.35. The referee is Sam Grove White. This game is also live on S4C, free to air, as well as Premier Sports. Now, Ospreys are having a really good season, as we know. They're the only Welsh team that's um, likely to break into that top eight. But they are coming up against Leinster in Dublin. And I know a lot of Ospreys fans were hoping that Leinster might rotate because they've just played the semi-final of an A against Northampton. However, it looks like, reading uh, the O'Connor's comments, they're going to go fully loaded. And that makes the task even more difficult. <laughs> However, Ospreys have won in Dublin before. So it's perfectly doable. How do you think they'll get on then? Do you think this is a winnable game for the Ospreys? Do they need to win this one? But it's a game they have to take something from it. To stay within that topic, yeah. Um, they need something from all the games. And quite frankly, all these games are cup finals for them. Even coming going into next week against you, you know, Dragons pick up that win against the Ospreys. And, you know, Dragons are probably favourites for the Welsh Shield. You know, they, they, there's still other elements to go through it. So this. It's not as if they're going to be turning up against someone who's got nothing to play for. And Leinster are probably a little bit annoyed with themselves. They know they took a week inside on South Africa, but they're probably really annoyed that they didn't pick up some points down there. And they now know if they won that top spot, which is it's probably not essential to winning the URC, with, which we have seen over the last couple of seasons. But you know, it's, it's a massive benefit, and they're really in danger of falling out of the top two even 
if they don't get the job done now on in every game for the rest of the season. So they've got to go fully loaded in all of them. That includes the Champions Cup final in the middle of it all. So yeah, I, if Osprey's picked up a losing bonus point, I think they'd be happy. But in all honesty, yeah. I, I can't see them coming away with anything. Harley? Yeah, I think similar, especially if, you know, they've announced, I think the last bit of Linston news I saw was that Gary Ryan Moses looking to make his return. Oh, um, it's okay. the one thing that, you know, I think Leinster could be very disappointed with that semi-final performance. I think they let Northampton have too close a say into into actually turning them over. And I think, you know, there might be some questions about whether or not they're, they're a bit undercooked. I I could see them resting a few players. You know, you might get you might have like a porter rested, but then they're bringing on Key and Healy. You know, that's that's not yeah. exactly a, a, a nice prospect. No. Uh and, you know, Lens I mean Ospreys have turned them over, you know, turned over Leinster in the past, but not this fully this full up full death star Leinster. You know, the last time they won it was at the third, I mean you can only play what's in front of you, but I think it's gonna be very hard. Um I think best way and I know I'm going to have some Osprey fans moaning about me about this, but I think they've got to go full booth ball and just be boring. Don't bother trying to play and do fancy stuff because Leinster will eat it up. Just scrum, you know, go scrum, good kicking game, and just eke it out. And I think if you drag them into the getters, you're going to have more of a chance than trying to pretend to be entertaining rugby. Hmm. It's a tough game, isn't it? I think whatever team lets to put out is difficult, especially in Dublin. But um, yeah, it's a really tough game for the Ospreys. Uh, best of luck to them because uh, they need the points. Today. I think they need at least the losing bonus point uh, out of this. So if they get that, I think they'll be happy because they'll just target 10 points then from Dragons. They'll, they'll get five points against Dragons because we're terrible in Swansea and against and Cardiff at Judgment Day. You, you know, always so. turn up against the Ospreys. Only at Rodney Parade, not in Swansea. We haven't won it in Swansea since Dave Flanagan was Osprey's playoff. <laughs> Seriously, it's been that long. I think it was 2010. It was 2010 the last time we won in Swansea. You, you do always step up when you play in a little region. That, that's one thing you take in consideration. And you know, Okay, except for Cardiff. <laughs> Don't do it against Cardiff. Cardiff. Well, you, you did turn up against Cardiff. It's just you, you turned up for Cardiff, you know? Uh, no unboxing day. I don't want to talk about that now. Anyway, it's upsetting. Although we were that bad, the FIFC would have beaten us that day. But uh, yeah, the less said about that, the better. Now, before we make our predictions, Harley, do you want to give an update on the prediction speed for us? Ah, uh, sure. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's obviously it hasn't changed much since last week. But just to sort of remind people, um, Mark, you've got you might as well go absolutely batshit with your predictions because Lee's dead last on 112 points. You've got. <laughs> <laughs> James on James on 120 and then fighting for top spot it's me currently in the top but Jamie second on 145 and I'm on 155 so so there's uh nine games left to predict so that's a decent well, number how, of points how, how did this scoring system work then so can, can, can I call person, back so the person who, the person who's closest to predicting gets four points second closest three two Ooh. one um, yeah, so it's just basically how far out on your prediction you are. Can't believe it. Oh. Uh, can only make up 27 points on you if you come last. It's devastating. Right. Let's make our predictions for the weekend. So, Friday night, Dragon Stormers. I said on Dragon Slayer, my prediction was Stormers by 11. And maybe I am being a bit kind, but I like to think that because it is the last uh, game at Ronnie Prey this season that you know, the Dragons are really going to front up and give it a good go. The only problem is whenever we've played the South African sides this season, we sort of stay in a fight for a little bit, but then the power eventually tells. And it's no secret that we got the worst scrum in the URC. That is a statistical fact um, in the URC stats. We, we are ranked 16th most scrum, so you know that we're going to struggle up front. But um, yeah, I've predicted Stormers by 11. Ali, what's your prediction? Dragons, Stormers. I've gone for... I'm, 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 yeah. Being very unkind here, I've gone for Stormers by 25. I think it's full noise Oof. with their spring box. It looks like it's going to be mm. decent weather as well. Like They're going to have a field there on, on uh, Dave Braid's fantastic track. And I don't think any of them are that bothered by the crowd boo it, about crowds booing them. Looking at listening to some of the games at the big derbies in South Africa, they're loud and I, yeah, I just think the likes of Le Bock are going to have a field there. 
yeah, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Um, Matt, what's your prediction then? Dragon Stormers? Well, in, in terms of this competition, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Stormers by 26. Just like, so uh, you, you've only got a small margin to win this one, Harley. Do you, do you want to make Here up a score go. for James as well? Dragons by 30. <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate that. Right then, well, Saturday then. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Scarlet's versus Elster. Go on, Martin. What's your... Oh, well, we know what you're going to say. We're going to say Scarlet's today, but uh... yeah, I'll go Scarlet's by then. Scarlet's by four. Harley, I've gone Ulster by seven. So I think I think um, Ooh, what is Scarlet's will get. I'll... I think you get a point out of it. Maybe two. Maybe five. Yeah, that would that be is nice. The... But also, exact... I'd be spitting feathers. You finish the season with more wins than us. Mm-hmm. That's exactly the same prediction I got. I wrote down here, yeah, Ulster by seven as well. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Losing bonus point there for the Scots. That would be pretty decent, I suppose. Right. So, prediction for James? Oh, what should we say? <laughs> Scarlet by 30. I was going to go with Ulster by 38, <laughs> but there we go. Yeah. So, what? Because like, they're not going to score that many. Ulster by 50. <laughs> Right, uh, the game after it's Lions versus Cardiff. Go on, then, Ali. What's your prediction? I've gone for Lions by twenty, and I feel like I've been going to Cardiff on that one. Twenty, that much? That's interesting. I, it's because we're not scoring, we're not making the most of our chances. That's that's all that's down to. And I, I'm hoping because I predicted the win against Edinburgh and we lost quite badly. I'm hoping it reverses the other way because I'd rather be wrong in my prediction. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Mark, can Cardiff get anything out of this game? How do you see it going? Lions by eight. Lions by eight. Okay. I've gone for Lions by 13 on that one. And like I said, I, I'm looking forward to watching it just because I think it, it could be a really fun game. And then Saturday uh-huh. night, Leinster Ospreys. So, Ali, let's come to you then. And the I've gone, I'm, I'm being incredibly kind on Ospreys. I'm going for Leinster by three. Just I'm oh. hoping they drag them down into it. They take that, I think. If they lost by three, they take them I'd, 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 take, I'd, take, I'd take that away to Leinster any day. Mm. Well, I'll be with that, Matt. Leinster by 15. Leinster by 15. Okay. Uh, I've gone for Leinster by 10. Um, it really does depend on the team that they put out. But, I mean, if they are going to go fully loaded, it's going to be very difficult for the Ospreys, isn't it? It's always a tough place to go. But, uh, yeah, I've gone for Leinster by 10. OK, then, before we wrap up, feeder pods. So, I'm out the Scarlet's feeder pod. That's out now, isn't it? Yeah, I, think uh, I, I believe so. But, yeah, so, what did you chat about on there? Well, we had a lovely chat about Van Der Vee's, uh small, of course. small matter of a, a semi-final win. Over Cardiff, I know looking to do a, a, a nice a nice treble, cup league leaders and league champions, so that'd be nice for them. And just a preview on Ulster, uh, we've we've not had any real news coming out of the Scarlets, well at all really. So I'm expecting a flood of it over the next few weeks, especially by the time June first comes around. I'm, I'm expecting at least four or five signings and. We were, we've been promised to leave us list before Ulster. We've been promised it. So, uh, you know, if, if, whether or not that comes through is, uh, is another question. Okay, great stuff. So that's out now if you want to listen to the Scarlet's Fever pod. Uh, the Dragon's Layer pod, that's out now. Uh, me and Gavin have talked about the new signings. We've got done a deep dive on every sign-in. We talked about David Buttress's departure. Uh, we couldn't talk about Shane Lewis Hughes because we recorded a pod and then literally, for the an hour later... Dragons announced the Shay Lewis inside it. And uh, yeah, so we, we talk about that and we previewed the Stormers as well. So there's a lot of chat going on there. That's out now with Dragon Slayer. Harley, Cardiff Central Pod, you recording this week, I believe? Yep, so we'll be recording uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. So uh, just we'll just be doing a bit more of an in depth preview of the Lions. Uh, we haven't managed, did manage to get a guess in time. Uh, probably talk a little bit in depth about the squad updates and where we see, see the lie of the land and. Sort of maybe get a prediction of who and what ifs coming next, uh, either coming or going. Uh, the only other thing I want to promote is me and Catboy are gonna do a, a special rap 
on Thursday nights, just sort of doing a more of a deep dive into Wales women because didn't really get the chance to do it on the regular pods because we're trying to keep keep the time back, the running time down. So we're just going to give them a big deep dive into the tournament. So that you know what means going into WXV two or three, depending on how the playoff against Spain goes. Excellent. So yeah, if you follow the women's game, um, keep an eye out for that one. Uh, that should be good stuff. Uh, our space Ivy, I do believe they are doing a pod. Um, yeah, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, and I think we'll leave it there for this week. Thank you very much, gents. Martin, thank you for stepping in for Lee. Much appreciated. Harley, thank you as always. And as I said earlier, please leave us a nice review on Apple and Spotify and any other pod platforms. And we'll be back next week with more news and views from the world of Welsh rugby. So until then, take care and goodbye. Right, let's start.